Just a few days ago in 1925, Oscar Barnack designed the first Leica camera, the Leica 1, with a 50mm f3.5 lens, adapted by Max Varick at Lights. To this day, a lot of people still say the 50mm is what is called a normal lens, which means a lens that represents what the human eye sees. Did Oscar pick 50mm because he believed it to be normal? What very few know is that the prototype of the Leica 1, called the Urleica, had a focal length of 42mm. The lens design wasn't sharp enough to resolve 35mm full frame, so Oscar had to design another lens entirely, the 50mm. So which is it? 42 or 50mm? Which focal length effectively represents the human eye? Let's find out in this video. Before I begin, for simplicity's sake, I'm going to be using the 35mm full frame equivalent. If that's confusing to you, I'll link to an article that might improve a few IQ points. Light passes through the lens of our eye to the retina. It's not a horizontal camera sensor, but a spherical dome. In humans, the retina is about 72% of a sphere, about 22 millimeters in diameter, which means the area of the retina is about 1,094 square millimeters. This is nothing like a camera sensor, but if you want to make it a horizontal sensor, you can look at the field of view of the human eye. In cinematography, field of view is crucial because it determines how much of the world your camera captures at a given moment. The human eye has a pretty impressive field of view, which allows us to take in a lot of information at once, much like a hungry production crew member serving a catering buffet. The horizontal angle of view of the eye is between 200 to 220 degrees. Vertically, it's about 135 to 150 degrees. That's an aspect ratio of 1.48. If I pick 22 millimeters as the horizontal size, we'll need to crop a whole lot of the retina. And that's not how the eye works. Through the magic of basic geometry, if we redraw the retina as a rectangular sensor with an aspect ratio 1.48, we get a sensor size of about 40 millimeters by 27 millimeters. This is just slightly bigger than a full frame 35 millimeter sensor. The aspect ratio and size of our retina is very similar to full frame 35. I don't know if this is a coincidence or if Oscar Barnack really knew this while adopting this frame size for a revolutionary new camera. The true focal length of the human eye is between 16.67 millimeters and 22 millimeters, depending on where you focus. It's called lens accommodation. Considering the small crop factor change in 35 millimeter equivalent terms, the focal length of the human eye translates to between 15 to 22 millimeters. That's really wide. Imagine you're trying to capture a beautiful sunset while also focusing on the actress you're really watching. Your camera lens might fumble, but your eyes? They got it covered, seamlessly shifting focus from one point to another. This ability is thanks to the flexibility of the lens in your eye, which can change shape quicker than a producer's wallet. What you're really seeing at the edges of your vision is peripheral vision. So while you're gazing lovingly into the eyes of your lead actor, you can still spot that boom mic creeping into the frame. Here's your first test. If you look through a 15mm or 22mm lens on full frame, do you see the world as you see it with your eyes? Maybe, maybe not. It's definitely one way to look at it. There are other ways. For example, the angle of view for binocular vision is about 120 degrees horizontally. Binocular vision means using both eyes to see, giving us depth perception and the ability to judge distance. Beyond this range, the eye is monocular. The vertical angle is 60 degrees. Now we have an aspect ratio of 2 to 1. This corresponds to a sensor size of about 24 by 12 millimeters. This is awfully close to Super 35, taking just the horizontal size. The coincidences are really intriguing here. Taking into account binocular vision, the focal length of the human eye in 35 millimeter equivalent terms is between 25 to 37 millimeters. If you want to know the math behind all this, I'll link to the article that goes with this video. I recommend a cold shower first. 25 to 37 millimeters is a pretty popular focal range. A lot of people consider 28, 32, 35, or 40 as the normal lens, and you can see how this is with good reason, but we can do more. The rods and cones in our retina drop off at about two points, one at about 120 degrees, or the binocular vision, and another at about 60 degrees. This is the central region, also called the near peripheral region. This is where the maximum cone activity takes place. Sharpness, color, most of the critical functions of the eye during normal lighting conditions are carried out in this zone. In humans, color vision and shapes are concentrated in the center of the visual field. If we consider this range, the sensor size is 12 by 6 millimeter, 
Guess which format this is awfully close to? Super 16. The focal length considering this region is about 49 to 73 millimeters. I don't know about you, but to me, this is the range I feel that best represents my eye and how I see the world. Shall we do one more? The central part of the retina is the macular region. This is where most humans focus their attention when they have to. If you consider the macular area only, you get a focal length of about 160 millimeters. So there you have it. The focal length of the human eye is pretty much fixed, but our idea of the focal length of the eye as it relates to cinematography varies between 15 to 160 millimeters. This is probably why we accept lenses in different focal lengths in a movie. We too selectively view the world even if it is presented to us in a wide field of view at all times. We only pay attention to what we want to pay attention to. If you're reading or playing games, our focus is at the telephoto end of this range. In a general sense, it can vary between 25 to 75 millimeters, which is also typically the normal range of a zoom lens. We find it normal because it satisfies most of us. Very few people would equate the widest angle, 15 millimeter, to how they see the world, even if the information is similar. However, we do experience the peripheries when we are looking at landscapes or the sky. When humans or objects enter the frame, it takes our attention away from the peripheries. The closer the person gets, the tighter our attention. Rarely do we comprehend the face as a whole at a close distance. We are always paying attention to some aspect of the face. So was Oscar Barnack right the first time around with the Oralika or the second with the Leica 1? If you average all focal lengths in the study, you get about 55 millimeters. If you ignore the macular focal length, you get 37 millimeters. If you ignore the widest and the macular, you get 42 millimeters. Of course, there's some variability in all these calculations. You could argue for between 40 to 45 millimeters. Don't take all these numbers religiously. There's a lot of room for error, even in the lens. A 50 millimeter lens made by one manufacturer might not have the same angle of view as a 50 millimeter from another manufacturer. However, from a democratic perspective, to hold the piece in cinematography land, you could argue Oscar got it right the first time around. 42 millimeter is as democratic as you can get. The very first 35 millimeter camera made a hundred years ago not only got the focal length as right as it could get, even the frame size is similar to how the eye is. How magical is that? Yet, Leica doesn't have a single lens that's 42 millimeters to this day. Staggering. The only thing more staggering is the number of likes and comments I can get for this video. Make it magical.